Yeah, as you can imagine, it's been all hands on deck here in Red Lodge for crews. And one of the points of emphasis was getting power restored in town. And this area was really key. In the distance, you can see a landslide. And then crews got really creative between Northwestern Energy and Beartooth Electric. It was all here at about 8th Street and Cooper Avenue in Red Lodge. Northwestern Energy says they got power restored at 1130 last night. And then working with Beartooth Electric, they got power restored to town at 9 a.m. And I do want to point out, when they say conserve water, they do not mean that water is not safe to drink right now. It is. They have people working tirelessly around the clock to make sure that it is. They're just saying, don't take an hour-long shower. Don't do any gardening or water your yard, especially with the rain that we've seen lately. That said, this has become a commodity right here in the Magic City. I've called nearly 10 stores in town. All of them, within hours of that announcement from the city saying they were shutting down the plant, ran out of water. They're working tirelessly themselves to find more water bottle supply to not only serve Billings, but all those surrounding communities that you've heard about, Joliet, Red Lodge, and Fromberg. All we've really been able to do is just watch the devastation of the flooding, the erosion in Red Lodge, things like bridges no longer standing. And for those of us who couldn't be here, it made you wonder, what is still standing there? What is okay in the sweet town of Red Lodge? And there was some rumors and maybe some speculation about the Red Box Car, a popular restaurant in town, possibly being washed away. It sits just above us on Rock Creek, right along the water. And a police announced that it is still standing and then some. And not only is the boxcar here intact, it's been ready to help the community out. They didn't have power for a while, didn't have water, so the owners made it run to Billings. They got a bunch of supplies and smoked some pulled pork for volunteers helping the town today. They were cooking all night long and they plan to continue to do so to help feed those working so hard to clean up Red Lodge. Spencer, please, good gracious, just take it away. What is happening there? You found some buddies, that's great. <laughs> yeah, John, you know, I thought you were my buddy. I thought maybe you'd be here tonight. I guess you got a job to do, but for right now, there's so much great stuff here. We talk about the rides, we talk about the food, but how about the performers like Roberto the Magnificent up here? Roberto's just doing it all on grass, up on the hill. He's been here off and on for 25 years. What's your favorite part about coming to Montana Fair? You know, it's a great crowd. That's what I love about the fair. Everyone's out here ready to have fun. Hurry, hurry, having a good time. He always has a great attitude, and he's going to ride on out of here. We're going to bring in Leaping Louie. Look at this thing. We can go through the ropes, bring through the camera, make sure you see it. He's doing it all. And then check this out. I'm a little tall, so we'll see how it goes. You're a tall guy, man. We tall go. We're we just going to hang out right here. This. You know, it's a little, a little hot outside. This creates a nice atmosphere. I heard you say it's hard to do a cowboy comedy show in 2022. It's not YouTube. Some of these kids got to learn how to interact. What are some of the challenges with that? What's up, John? I tell you what, it is a beautiful day here at Red Lodge Mountain, getting about two feet of snow yesterday and today. Not a cloud in the sky. Certainly can't complain. And I tell you what, I think a lot of people must have called out sick uh, because it's a Wednesday. Both parking lots were full. It's been uh, an absolutely hot in place. Still so much snow for people to really use, get into, um, and really just enjoy a sunny powder day. I'm a little bummed if people didn't take my advice and stay home. Uh, you know, stay safe, bundle up, let me have all the powder to myself, but it's so great to see everyone here. And of course it's great for Red Lodge Mountain who really needed the snow. Hey, well, I can tell you that it's great to have a rescue. I got two of them. If you follow me on social media, you watch enough, you'll know this is Axel. This one who's always looking for treats and sitting, good girl, is Vale. And I got both of them from Res Dog Rescue, a great organization, takes care of dogs in Hardin and Crow Agency, gives them a great home. So many groups, Stafford Animal Shelter. Actually, you're gonna take my mic, pal. He got his paw nice and caught on it. Well, gotta love live television, but. Axel is having a great day at Dealer Park as the Billings Mustangs take on the Boise Hawks. And if you're wondering, what the heck is he staring at? It's this green tennis ball. They hand them out to all the dogs when you come in the gates today for four bucks. Your dog can come to Dealer Park, catch the game. It just started. First pitch was about five minutes ago. And all the proceeds from tonight's ticket sales go to Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter. So it's sunny. You can bring the dogs. And we discovered this dog park deep out in center field, so it's a great time for them. They can hang out in the shade, in the grass, as you catch in the baseball game. And so uh, we're going to play some fetch, and we'll see you here at the park. 
Warmer months ahead means more summer travel, and that brings a higher risk of car accidents. It's known throughout our state as the 100 deadliest days of summer. According to the National Traffic Fatality Guidelines, beginning Memorial Day weekend and 100 days after is the most dangerous time to travel on America's roadways. Experts say it's because fewer people are wearing their seatbelts, while many are also choosing to drive under the influence during summer holiday celebrations like Memorial Day weekend or the 4th of July. Good evening. Thank you for being with us on Montana Right Now. I'm Spencer Martin. The 100 deadliest days hit closer to home tonight. As we've now learned, three people were killed in a two separate vehicle crashes on Friday. Near Shepard, a 13-year-old was hospitalized and two five-year-olds killed in a crash Friday afternoon. Montana Highway Patrol reports a side-by-side -side ATV was northbound on Hofferbur Road when it pulled in front of a sedan driving westbound on Shepherd Acton Road. The sedan hit the passenger side of the side-by-side, -side, causing it to roll and land in the ditch. The 13-year-old driver was injured and taken to Billings Clinic. The two five-year-old passengers were pronounced dead on arrival by first responders. The 18-year-old driver of the sedan was also injured. Highway Patrol doesn't know whether the teen driving or the children who were passengers were buckled up when this incident happened. And this is what Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton had to say last week when we asked him about his experiences responding to accidents during the 100 deadliest days here in Montana. Thank you, Tracy. And we are in fire mode as eight structures have been destroyed in the fast-growing Elmo 2 fire burning outside of Polson. We're told four of those are actual primary residences. Just overnight, the fire grew by 2,000 acres. The now 18,000-acre fire sparked late last week between Big Arm and Elmo, and since then, Dozens of homes have been evacuated. Right now, the fire is only 6% contained. The incident management team will be speaking to the community tonight at 7 during a press meeting where they'll discuss further containment and evacuation plans. Meanwhile, the largest fire in our region, the Hop Creek Fire, is now 95% contained up about 10% from when we updated you at 5 o'clock. The fire in Golden Valley County has burned 2,200 acres. The cause of that fire is still reportedly undetermined. I actually got my swim trunks on. I got my uh, things on my head because we have a dunk tank also started at six o'clock that I will be a part of. So if you want to see me get dunked in the water, come out here to Landon's Miracle Field. It's really just a great community celebration. We'll see you again with more here at six o'clock. So that <laughs> there we go, Bubba. Uh, yeah, that's what we were waiting for. Yeah. Hello, yeah, it's our final cookout for the Cure of June. It's been a great event as we serve the best meal in town. Honestly, for your money, five bucks gets you a hamburger, a hot dog, a bag of chips, and a drink with that as well. And as you can see, it's, it's a hit. We already have a huge line of people waiting. We can't flip these burgers fast enough right now. People just keep coming, and we want you to come out because all of the proceeds from this event go to Yellowstone County Relay for Life. And if you're thinking five bucks, you know, does that make a big difference? These have raised around $800 each time. All that money going right to Yellowstone County Relay for Life as they look to achieve their goal. So I know you just got home, but you're looking in the fridge, you're thinking, what's for dinner? How about a hamburger or a hot dog? Come check us out at the Spoke Shop. Welcome to sunny Las Vegas. Spencer Martin, Chris Byers here outside the Thomas and Mack Center as we get ready for the final three nights of the National Finals Rodeo. And it's been a great one for nearly 10 Montana and Wyoming Cowboys. Now, Chris, you've been coming down here to the desert for nearly three decades. Yeah. What makes this week so special, not just for the Cowboys, but for rodeo fans? It's been really fun if you're a Montana State fan. Really fun if you're Jabril Bello. A lot of dunks. It's just kind of dunk after dunk. The guy may go for 50 points. Cats leading by 14 right now. Really fun. The women, as you mentioned, have North Dakota after this. And really tonight is about celebrating championships. They're going to hang both of those Big Sky Conference championship banners after the men's game. Both teams will be honored before the women tip off against North Dakota State. And uh, honoring champions kind of been the theme today. This is the main event, the Yellowstone River Roundup, three days of PRCA Rodeo, and it's great for rodeo fans, even if you just want a fun live activity because you're getting not only Montana's best, but some of the world's best. And tonight, the focus really is steer wrestling, world champion in 2019, Ty Erickson, Helena's Timmy Sparing, top 10 in the world, Bridger Chambers out of Stevensville, he's right on the bubble right now at 16 in the world. So you're seeing a lot of guys with just over a month ago in the season competing to stay in inside that top 15 to make it down to Las Vegas. The Beartooth Pass remains closed indefinitely after the effects on the road of those devastating floods. Areas like Lake Fork, Camp Greeno, 
behind me at this point are still closed as those crews work hard to get this area reopened. That said, a lot of this forest is gonna be open starting this week for hikers to enjoy. Amazing day on Saturday for the 103rd Crow Fair. Obviously, the arbor, brand new, it is beautiful. It welcomed in not just people native to this area, people familiar with Crow Fair, but the key theme for this year was bringing in visitors. And that is certainly what the key was. It's what you saw on display today. Right now, you're looking at the grand entrance for the powwow on Saturday, a, a intertribal event that featured different drummers, singers, different dances, traditional, everything that you could possibly want in a beautiful display of culture. And that's what it was for people who were first time visitors to Crow Fair. It's been so amazing. We met so many great people. And just to see, we, we were crying, or at least I was, he wasn't, but um, just the, 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 how they celebrate the culture. I really love that no one are, is here as entertainers, you know? Yeah. They're truly celebrating their culture with pride. I mean, it's just awesome. I just love the way they're dressed and the fact that they're celebrating their heritage and from the little ones to the older ones, it's just so beautiful, yeah. so beautiful. And I would say to anyone, just make it your business to come here because there's nothing that you're going to get from it other than love and peace and harmony and you're not going to experience it anyplace else so it's really important to just make the commitment come once you're here for a crow fair you'll probably never miss another crow fair after this the celebration that happens once a year at the teepee capital of the world from crow agency spencer martin montana right now Thank you for staying with us. Well, one of my favorite hobbies is to head up to Red Lodge Mountain and go skiing. And for over three decades, Eagle Mount has helped those with intellectual or physical disabilities do just that. Nice turn! Stand up tall. Since 1988, Eagle Mount has helped individuals with disabilities embrace life without limits. Eagle Mount is like a place that individuals can come and recreate throughout the year that um, is like an outlet for, for parents and um, they, they can just like come and have fun and socialize, meet new people. Landon Phelps started ski lessons with Eagle Mount when he was just six years old. Today, he's a lift operator at Red Lodge Mountain. The spirit up here, um, it's you can, we're kind of a down the homers resort. Um, we're not like Big Sky. Um, we're kind of all one big family here. And we might we might not get the best snow, but when we do have snow, it's a blast. And even when we don't, it's still fun. He says learning to ski has been a blessing, and he hasn't missed a weekend on the mountain ever since. Phelps says the instructors at Eagle Mount cater to anyone with physical or intellectual disabilities. Oh my gosh, she's a champ already. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, so you're with the same ski instructor every week or every time you come up, uh, and they just work with you and they're real understanding. Rachel says Landon's a perfect example of what they hope to achieve through all 13 of their year-round programs. Landon is a, is a success story as, um, you know, in Eagle Mount size because he can still come and everyone knows him and and then can still participate and, and instruct and be there, but also is like making, you know, making moves in the community. End up on the mountain, progress can mean something different for everybody. And the little things of like putting their boots on is like a huge thing. All the way to helping someone find a passion for skiing. Right now I have a student that I took from Never Ever last season to now he's on the chairlifts and um, it, it's just, he loves it. You know, he never thought he would. It's very rewarding to have them, the ones that really want to learn and progress. It's just, there's nothing like it. It's just your heart just gets happy. Catherine has been a volunteer ski instructor with Eagle Mount for 10 years, helping countless kids on the slopes. It's just amazing to watch. They, they light up, you know, they get very excited when they accomplish something. Volunteers are the heart of this program, and if it's recreation in the winter or the summer, Eagle Mount is ready to put your time to good use. The volunteers are the heart of this program, and we love volunteers. We need more volunteers. If you can ski, if you can walk, get hold of Eagle Mount because you will get more out of it than you realize you're putting into it. So be a volunteer and come have fun with us.